tape for Mayweather against Leha. They both weigh in just a little over the limit. Leha at 132, Mayweather at 141. As you can see, by tonight, the time they enter the ring, each has gained a little bit of weight. Mayweather gaining nine pounds, Leha gaining six. One-inch height advantage for Leha and a three-inch reach advantage for Floyd Mayweather. And working with us is our unofficial ringside score, and here with the rules of the bout, as always, Harold Letterman. The Floyd Mayweather Louis Leha fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. There is no standing gate count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell in the 10th and final round only. Jim. All right, Harold, for the official introductions, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the County Coliseum here in El Paso, Texas, where tonight, Top Rank Incorporated, Lester Bedford Promotions, DMP Productions, and your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, present professional boxing for your entertainment. Sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Executive Director Tommy V. Smith, Boxing Coordinator Dickie Cole, Deputy Executive Director in attendance at ringside Henry Molina. The three judges scoring this first bout on a 10-point must system will be David A. Harris, Oren Schellenberger, and Gail Van Hoy. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jerry McKenzie. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special 10-round bout. This is in the super featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with gold letters, weighing in at 132 pounds. His professional record, 18 victories, 14 by knockout with three defeats and one draw. From San Antonio, Texas, introducing the Louisville Slugger. Louis Leha. And his opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing purple trimmed with white, weighing 131 pounds. This Olympic bronze medal winner has a perfect professional record of nine consecutive victories with seven knockouts to his credit. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, presenting the undefeated pretty boy, Floyd Mayweather. All right, let's go, guys. Gentlemen, we've already built with instructions in the dressing room. Number one, protect yourself at all times. Touch them up, let's go to work. Floyd May Mayweather certainly has championship blood coursing through his veins. We'll find out if he has the stuff of a champion once he gets hit on the chin by a fighter who can punch. Let's see if Louis Leha is that man. Mayweather comes from the fighting Mayweather family of Grand Rapids, Michigan. His father was an accomplished prize fighter. His uncle, Roger, once was known as the Black Mamba and also as the Mexican Assassin, is training him right now. His uncle, Jeff, is functioning for the moment as his manager, a role which will eventually be taken over by Father Floyd. Louis Leha wants to try to do some damage to Floyd Mayweather's body early. Floyd is showing a lot of experience early. He's already coming out. He's using his jab very well, and he's not taking any crazy chances. This is very good for a young fighter. Floyd is very economical for a young fighter. He's only been throwing about 50 punches per round to this stage in his career, but he's highly selective and extremely accurate puncher and makes them count. But that also reflects the fact that he will play defense. As you see there, making it tough on Leha to land here early in round number one. One of the things that Roger's working on with Floyd Mayweather is try to get him to hide the right hand. His uncle Roger was a master at hiding the right behind his curled left shoulder. Floyd doesn't do it quite as well yet. No, but after having a little bit more experience like this, he'll learn to do it. That was a good right hand. Good straight right, and another one by Floyd Mayweather. 
It takes time and experience to learn some of these things. Louis Leha's cousin, Jesse James Leha, here tonight, sitting in his corner in support of him. Incidentally, the man who's training Louis Leha for this fight, Jesse Ravello, was an Olympic coach. Down goes Leha on a right hand over the top by Mayweather. A, a quick Seven. right hand. Was it a flash hey. knockdown hey. or something more serious hey. than that? We'll know momentarily. It was something very serious, I can tell you now. Lloyd Mayweather looking for a first round knockout. Now with 55 seconds to go in the round, lands the right hand across the top one more time. There was another good right hand that hurt Neha. And a couple of lefts, one of them to the body, and a short left hand landed inside. He is doing some damage right now. Louis Leha trying to hold on. Two. And Jerry McKenzie's going to give him a count. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Let me see your gloves. You okay, baby? Leha has to try to survive now. There is no standing eight count in the rules, so McKenzie must have ruled out another knockdown. His glove may have touched the canvas. The three knockdown rules in effect as the 10 second mark arrives. If Leha were to go down one more time, the fight would be over. But he holds on long enough to make it out of the round. You okay? You okay? You let him get off too much. That's what's happening. You let him get off too much. You got to go right over his jab with that right hand. You got to back him up. Okay, you're giving him too much room, Louis. Feel okay? Yeah. Louis, you got to get busy, Louis. Okay. Yeah, get busy with that hook, Louis. What the fuck is that? Just work? Louis, right after that jab. As soon as he throws that jab, you got to take the jab away. Uh, let's take a look at that quick flash right hand. It landed flush on the jaw. This is supposed to be a 10-round fight. It was advertised as a 10-round fight. Doesn't look like it's going to be a 10-round fight. Let's see about the second knockdown, whether it was a legitimate knockdown or not. Or did he just go down from an accumulation of blows? Well, he grabbed Floyd's leg, and maybe when he was grabbing Floyd's leg, he put the glove or a knee on the canvas, although I didn't see it. I think he's just trying to hold himself up. So in that case, the referee must have ruled that he kept himself up only by holding on to Floyd. And that's why he gave him a standing eight count. Which isn't in the rules, so it had to be ruled a knockdown. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather trying to use his punches economically in the second round as he did in the first. His power quotient seems to be increasing at this stage of his career, Rob, uh, Roy. Yes, it is. And he's showing a lot of improvement here. I've seen Floyd fight on several different occasions. He never shows so, many, so much poise or so much power. He's not getting too over-anxious. He's taking his time, and he's out thinking his man right now. Landed a right-hand lead and a left-hook flush, and uh, Leha hasn't been able to get anything going. Landed just four of 27 punches in the first round. Louis Leha just a little bit too slow to be able to match up with Floyd Mayweather. Not too many guys, Roy, I know of who can throw that quick lead right hand with a lot of power. You know anybody who can do that? Maybe one or two guys. <laughs> guy by the name of Roy Jones Jr. and maybe one or two other fellas. <laughs> but uh, Roy Jones Jr. destroyed Montel Griffin leading with the left hook. He's versatile. What can he say? Straight right lands again for Mayweather. Leha a little bit steadier on his feet in this round than he was in round number one. But Mayweather is finding his way directly up the middle against Leha's guard, and that shows that Louis Leha, who vowed to have more head movement after his knockout loss to Jesus Chavez, has not been able to accomplish that. He's still vulnerable to punches right up the middle. What we're seeing right now is one guy who's doing the best thing. The best defense is offense. That's what Floyd has going for him right now. He's out in front of Leha. Leha, everything Leha does is following what Floyd is doing. Anytime a man gets that far out in front of you, it usually means trouble. Leha had a chance there to try to go to Mayweather's body, but wasn't able to release any punches. He's totally tentative and back on his heels now. For that reason, there's the third knockdown of the first two rounds. Lloyd is totally pumped. Hey, see your gloves. You okay, champ? Sir. Okay. Left hook lands, 
Leha stunned again. And you can stop it any time. And Jerry McKenzie's going to stop it right there. After the fourth knockdown of the fight, and with abundantly clear evidence that Louis Leha could not defend himself against Floyd Mayweather's onslaught. Too much speed, too much power, too fast, too smart. Too good. <laughs> You, you, you still, I believe, Roy, you have to be careful in how you move a young fighter. Who do you put him in with next? Are you going to overmatch him because he looked good in this fight? Um, you still have to put in your, your time before you're ready to take on the big boys. They're not going to follow you around, as you were suggesting. Some of those guys are going to take the fight to you. Right. And you also have to get a guy to go through that stage where he develops the patience, where he has time to work on these different things, work on guys coming right at him, work on guys running away from him. It's going to take a little time, but I think Florida is moving at a rapid pace right now. And top rank is doing a reasonably good job of selecting the opponents in the last fight. He had to struggle a little bit to earn a six-round decision over journeyman Larry O'Shields. Here he appears to be moving up in class, but it's a very easy fight for him. Maybe he's rising to the occasion. And there's brother, or I should say uncle, Jeff Mayweather, functioning as the manager, and in the purple silks, Roger Mayweather, who used to earn a good living in Los Angeles, fighting Mexicans and beating them in the identity of the Mexican assassin. Now here's the first knockdown of the second round. That straight right hand again, Roy. Yeah, the Aleja uh, throw the lazy jab, and Mayweather came right over the top. If that's the worst mistake a young fighter can make, is throwing a lazy jab. And now a chance to see the end on Louis Leha's 24th birthday. Uppercut landed easily. Left hook landed flush. That left hook hurt him bad. Fight was over from that moment. These are formalities at this point. Hard right hand to the body. And Jerry McKenzie sees what everyone else in the crowd can see. And he did a good job by stopping it then because this guy had had enough. He was outclassed. He knew he was outclassed. And it was time to stop it. Too many power shots. Way too many. So 130-pounder Floyd Mayweather expected within the next few years, if all goes well, to fight at 130, try to win a title, and go to 135, 140. The pattern already established by Oscar De La Hoya, and maybe somewhere down the road, if all goes well, he becomes a viable opponent for De La Hoya, who already has so many of them on his dance card. Yeah, he has a great deal of people that he can dance with. I wish I was so lucky sometime, but... Don't you wish you had some Ike Cortez and Felix <laughs> Trinidad's around in your weight class? But, but it's good to see this happen. It's good to see this. Michael Buffer with the official particulars now. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jerry McKenzie calls a halt to the bout. The official time, 23 seconds of round number two. The winner by TKO victory, still undefeated, pretty boy Floyd Mayweather Jr.